Hello and greetings from my oasis of dirt amidst a sea of very spiky things. It's nice to have this much space we can move around, but we've been here for a couple days just uh, hanging out, uh, doing a bunch of editing. I just really needed to hunker down and get that done as well as spend some time just stretching and lounging and just really soaking in the sun. It was a pretty eventful week leading up to my arrival here, but before I can get into any of that, I'm pretty hungry, so I'm gonna make some food, I'm trying to use up the last of my produce before going into town. Another day has gone by. <laughs> I'm still here. I thought for sure that I would go into town today. When I got here, I thought maybe I would go into town the day before yesterday, but then I quickly realized, oh, this is a nice spot. I should get a bunch of work done and rest. So I stayed here Thursday. Then I decided to stay here Friday, which was yesterday. And today's Saturday and I'm still here. I will not be going anywhere today. And now I'm gonna spend bit of the rest of the afternoon reading Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which just came across my path a bunch of times. And then I was in a bookstore in Olympia with my friends and I saw it there and this book is beautiful. So I got it. I, I just couldn't resist. I was like, oh, it's a sign from the universe. I'm pretty new to the concept of stoicism or like the philosophy, I guess, of stoicism. But um, I was kind of drawn to it because I started seeing uh, a bunch of shorts come up from Daily Stoic on YouTube and like it just makes so much sense like so much of it is like already how I live or like my philosophy in life like my mindset especially like memento mori and um yeah just like not worrying too much about the things I can't control there's another term I came across today uh, but basically it's that you do like foresee all the worst things that could happen you just don't spend any time concerned about it you know you're just like aware that what could happen and you're prepared accordingly you just go on with life it's been a good read so far most of what i read is like i guess spiritual texts this is my first i guess dive into philosophy uh but i'm used to reading like pretty thick stuff so i read slowly reread reread <laughs> think about it come back to it um so yeah, I'm in no rush to get through this book. I'd rather get more out of it. And like, I'm already intending to read it again, like I do with uh, many books, like the Dhammapada I've read probably like 10 times at this point, because I get something out of it every time I read it. Anyways, that was a ramble about books. Yeah, it's been a week. It's been a week. Uh, a week ago today, I met up with my friend Camel on the Arizona Trail above Roosevelt Lake. I found us a really nice camp spot. It was a really nice place to just hang out, take a Sunday off together. He took a day off hiking and we just um, ate some really, really good food and lounged in this like beautiful cow pasture. I don't know. It's, I mean like the areas in most primary users are cows. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like uh, so lush and green. The ground was so soft, which is really nice when like everything around is like kind of pokey. Yeah, and then Monday he started hiking again and I just met him a few miles down the trail so that we could do uh, the climb out of Roosevelt Lake together. So I hiked a couple miles with him and then hiked back to the van and it was really nice. I honestly thought the climb was going to be way harder. 
the views were just so nice. Um, the summit we went to is actually a little bit off trail. There's no trail to get to it. And it was really spiky and there's definitely some blood uh, because I was just walking through stuff forgetting that there is spikes everywhere. Um, but nobody had been to the summit or at least hadn't signed the summit register. Like it's like a jar of paper and a little pile of rocks since uh, April 2022. Um, and even at that point, there was just like a few people a year. It's it's unremarkable summit, but the view is nice. You know, it's not like, ooh, and ah, when you stand on the top, everyone's going to like think you're so cool because it's all like rocky and exposed. Like, yeah, it's it's got the name of a mountain, but it was just a nice spot. So then after hiking down, the clouds came in, which was really great to make a cool afternoon. So I took myself to Tonto National Monument to see one of the cliff dwellings there. I could only go and visit the lower cliff dwelling because the upper one is like tour only and they only do tours like through April and they're all booked up already. Like, like some of these things you really got to plan ahead and that's just not me and I get that I miss out I miss out on some things in life like I just also didn't know it was there until I was driving by to meet my friend I saw the sign for it so on the way back I was like cool I'll go there and then I drove back around to Superior where I had spent most of the week before the sunset was absolutely incredible And then I got up early the next day and I went and met my friend um, Matt, who is also known as Verde, who I also met through hiking the Pacific Crest Trail in 2018. We went to the Arboretum because the first Tuesday every month is free, which is amazing. I brought my macro lens, so we just walked around there for a couple hours and just, yeah, enjoyed just talking, catching up, and just like all these beautiful plants. You again? Have you considered thinking about your future yet the way I do? Considering that you're me, you should know that it's been a pretty hectic and challenging past couple months. Yeah, I'm aware, but that's just how life is. And if you wait for things to slow down to think about your future, you're going to end up living in a van for the rest of your you life. Know, I don't really see a problem with that. Well, I do, which is why I decided to work with today's sponsor, which is Discount Lots. Do you mind reminding me what they're all about again? It'll be my pleasure. At DiscountLots.com, it's easy to navigate their website and you can visit tons of home sites in many different states in the U.S. without having to move an inch. The property descriptions are clear and they have a lot of exclusive off-market listings which you won't find anywhere else. They offer owner financing terms or easy monthly payments so you don't need to pay the whole amount at one time and you can buy land for as little as $200 a month. There's no extra fees and there's no credit checks, background checks, or income checks, which means anyone has the opportunity to purchase land regardless of their credit situation. Buying land has never been this easy. All you have to do is go to discountlots.com, choose the property you want, click buy now, and voila, you're done. The Discount Lots team will take care of everything. And don't forget to use code DLALPINE10 at checkout to save 10%. Look, all I'm asking is that you check out their website and think about your long-term stability so that I don't have to worry about you so much. Okay, okay, I will. But can I get back to my book and the rest of this video now? I don't know, I'll make you din dins. I'll make you din dins if you lay here while I make my din dins. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really glad I took the time I did here. I spent three and a half days here. Um, 
turns out I needed the rest. I needed to just decompress and I feel so much better now that I've got some work done and I've had some quiet time just to myself to think and not talking to people as much as I love my friends. Uh, it brings stuff up and I need time to like process and think and just get back to myself. So yeah, I'm just going to spend some time now just sitting, looking out at the dark night, enjoying the cool air. But yeah, I have been kind of cleaning up at night, um, not the door rug, but like picking up everything else on the ground and bringing it inside because I am terrified of scorpions. <laughs> I saw my first um, real life scorpion uh, the other day, several days ago before leaving my other camp. And um, I pulled the van back and it was on the leveling block under my tire. But I didn't realize that until the block was in my hand and then the scorpion fell off and I got this really bad photo of it. But um, it was tiny and as far as I can tell, it's like the one scorpion around here that could possibly kill me. I'm not totally sure. There's a bunch of scorpions. I've been researching it now to like quell my fears because in my mind, every scorpion, if it like touched me, I would die. And that's just not the case. There's tons of scorpions down here. Um, and only one that could maybe kill a human things would probably be a bit different for Frank But I don't think it feels good to get stung or Probably pinched by any type of scorpion, but this one especially Is good to avoid so I've been developing good camp habits So that I don't uh, in the morning go to pick something up and there's a scorpion Alright, so it has been a really hectic but really awesome couple days. I met up yesterday with my friend Alex from Instagram. We met in real life for the first time and it was amazing. We went on this great hike to this waterfall. Yeah, which is kind of the thing to do this time of year when you're like around Tucson and there's water flowing. You do the hikes that go to water. So that was, that was really awesome. We just like chatted the whole time. Like it was just so comfortable and so easy. So then I did a couple town chores and I had booked myself in for a reservation here at Catalina State Park. Fortunately, the only spot I could get was like in the ringtail loop, which is honestly like the worst design for like a campground I've ever seen. Like it's not inviting to spend time at. It's literally just park a big RV and like go inside. So that like wasn't... The best the view is really nice but alex came and joined me for the night so we hung out here and chatted and then this morning we went for a great hike up another canyon to like some pools and like a little waterfall and it was really fun because it snowed on us we got hailed on we got snowed on the clouds were super dramatic it was really pretty um and then i've just spent a bit of time um just like filling up on my water washing a bunch of dishes just like using the sink here with like running water which like rinsed out some dirty socks. I don't know when I'm gonna get to do laundry again or when I'll prioritize doing laundry. I had a shower here last night, which was amazing. So not my favorite place to camp, but I got like enough chores done and the hike done that would have been a day fee. So I feel like I got my money's worth, but um, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing with my life, like at all. So I don't know. I'm gonna go get gas and then I'm gonna try to figure something out and yeah. All right, good morning. It's been a few days. A lot has happened and I'm not where I was. <laughs> So we're out enjoying a nice morning stroll. This is Camel, you've met him. And we're gonna find somewhere nice to sit and I'm gonna catch you up on the past few days of the opposite of storm chasing, I guess. Anyways, it's been eventful. Uh, 
Uh, it's been, like I said, a few days since I left my oasis of dirt to drive down to Tucson. I had actually initially been planning to go further south and spend some time in southern Arizona before meeting up with my friend Camel, but um, I had just been like getting this feeling like, no, I just want to go see Camel now. So that's what I did at like 1 p.m. I left Tucson. I drove like uh, up north of Phoenix, like almost like two hours north of Phoenix to this like little town. And I found him in his tent like right at dark. <laughs> and there was actually a storm coming in and it had like snowed there a bit that day. So we loaded up into my van. He packed up his camp and we loaded up into my van and we just went to like a nearby <laughs> dirt road. Um, and driving in, I was like, okay, there's like a bit of snow on the road, uh, and some snow had melted. So it was actually really muddy, like that red earth when it gets wet, like it's just like the greasiest, slickest, stickiest mud. So we like set up our camp in this spot. And then at like 2.30 in the morning, I woke up and I could just like, did not feel right about being there. And I started checking the weather and it was calling for like maybe like a foot of snow, like really strong winds and like really, really cold temperatures down to like zero degrees Fahrenheit. And I was just like, no, like we shouldn't be here. We definitely shouldn't be here. I could not, I just like could not be okay with being there. Like I have heat in the van, but like camels in a tent. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, if it snows a foot, like we're going to end up being here for quite a while. So then at like three in the morning, I woke him up and like told him what I was thinking and what I thought we should do, which was just move to like lower elevation, just like go for a drive and be somewhere nicer. So that's what we did. We packed up, we got out of there. It felt so good to get back to paved road. We drove south like an hour and a half, two hours, and we set up camp in a really nice area um, where we did not get snowed on. But we did end up having like pretty bad storm anyways, not as bad as it would have been. It was just rain, but like really, really bad wind and like torrential downpour. I ended up breaking Camel's tent. And everything got wet and the tent was broken. <laughs> so we just shoved the tent under my van and like slept on my spare bed for the night. And then we spent like the whole day like drying everything out and like me just like organizing in my van and stuff. Um... So like it worked out okay. It worked out better than if we'd been like trapped in the snow and like way cold. And then uh, we came down here where we are now. We set up camp yesterday. Really, really nice camp spot. So we've been like going hiking. So we've enjoyed this nice morning hike, but I should get going and get back to Frankie before it gets warm in the van. Um, I got this app that's like really gonna be super helpful with me like planning my leaving him in the van so he doesn't get hot. So I'll talk about that in the next episode. This has just been the weirdest episode. This has been like two weeks of my life where I honestly just really didn't feel like talking to the camera. I was spending a lot of time with friends. A lot was happening. Life was moving fast. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to keep my feet under me. I just, um, yeah, just like wasn't really into like talking and like filming aside from like a few clips of B-roll here and there. So yeah, it's kind of like a life update, I guess. Yeah, that's it for today. So thank you so much for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as weird as it was please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already uh, if you want to know when my videos come out right away then hit the notification bell and turn on your youtube notifications so that you're alerted when i put out videos they are going to be probably a little more random moving forward and not just like every sunday like i had been trying to because yeah life's like in a bit of an upheaval but um huge thank you to patrons for supporting my channel and helping me like grow as a creator. So really appreciate that. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.